Hey, what's up guys? This is Tron here and today I am with Kiko. Today we're going to discuss some of the pros and cons of living in China in 2021 through the perspectives of an expat. We've lived in Yantai, which is a tier 3 city in Shandong province for about 5 years. So we know basically everything there is to know about everything in China for everyone. We are total experts. Hopefully this video will help you decide whether living in China, especially in a smaller city, is the right decision for you. Okay, pro number one of living in China is convenience. First of all, transportation here is very convenient and you do not need to own a car to live in China. Uh, buses here, subways here are very, are very easy to take and they are readily available. And if you want to take a taxi, you can hail one straight from your phone. Uh, more where there are shared bikes available all over the city. All you have to do is to scan the QR code of the bike and ride the bike around. One thing to stress is this varies by city. So for example, the price of a bus uh, is quite, well, it's relatively low here in Yantai, but it's much higher in a tourist hotspot, for example, in Sanya. I think that's what you found when you were there recently. Yeah, true. Uh, in Yantai, it's about, uh, it's one yuan. So that's like 15, 15, 16 cents for a bus ride anywhere. Uh, in Sanya, it was a little bit more expensive. It ranged from two to nine yuan. So it's still around a dollar. It's relatively affordable here to take the bus. Right. Another variation is with subway. You mentioned the big cities have wonderful subway systems like Shanghai, Beijing, uh, and Shenzhen. But in Yantai, we actually don't have a subway system yet. When I first moved here about five years ago, they said that it would be finished about two years from then. And that two-year timeline has been pretty fixed since that time. In China, it's uh, essentially an app-based, mobile-friendly lifestyle. For example, to pay for items, you essentially just uh, use your phone. Uh, use WeChat Pay, Alipay to, to pay for stuff nowadays. Uh, nowadays, I don't even carry my wallet around and I just carry my phone for all the, uh, the payments that I need throughout the day. Uh, and also shopping here is, is just very convenient using uh, Jingdong or JD. And there's also Taobao. So Taobao is like the, the eBay of China. You can get anything on Taobao. Hey Kiko, what's something cool you bought on Taobao? Probably my favorite thing I bought on Taobao was chickpeas and tahini, which I used to make hummus. I really enjoyed that. What about you? Okay, so <laughs> extremely funny story. In 2016, I bought a gas-powered scooter, a motor scooter, from an American dude living in Yantai who was leaving. So, to get gas on the, uh, at gas stations, I essentially needed a license plate on my scooter. I didn't have one at the time. So I went on Taobao and actually bought a fake scooter license plate. And, you know, that worked very well. I was able to get gas at gas stations. So did you ever run into any negative consequences? Not for two years. Pro number two of living in China in 2021 is physical safety. So I first came to China about 10 years ago, and since that time I have been in big cities and small cities. I've gone walking alone and in groups in the daytime and at night, and I've never felt in danger of being mugged or under threat by pickpockets or anything like that, or scams, or really I've never felt uh, under any kind of threat of that type. Uh, and so I generally feel much safer in China compared to some other places where I've been. Well, so w which countries have you felt unsafe in? Uh, well, uh, Manila. Philippines and Chicago in the U.S. combined. All right, pro number three of living in China in 2021 is the diverse selection of awesome, delicious food. So in China, you can get different kinds of food uh, in different regions. Uh, in Yantai, in Shandong province, we have really, really good barbecue, really good skewers, really good lamb soup, and really good seafood. In other parts of China, for example, in Sichuan province, in Chengdu, you can get very good hot pot, good spicy food. In uh, Guangdong province, you can get very good dim sum, very good roast duck. So the food varies uh, between different regions and uh, the food here is just awesome. So Kiko, what's your favorite Chinese food? I like dovenao. It's like a tofu based soup sort of concoction that they make for breakfast. So literally it's tofu brains. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, yeah, that's right. I'm a character here. Pro number four of living in China in 2021 as an expat is the urban lifestyle and uh, urban density that's available here. So 
China's total area is about the same as that of the US, but the population is four times as large. So on average, the population density is about four times as great. Actually, this understates the population density in most Chinese cities because most Chinese people are crammed into the eastern third or so of the country around the east coast. So the actual density per city is much higher. So the result of this is that in, uh, in cities that are even beyond tier one, even beyond tier three, like in Yantai where we live, you can still easily find that urban hustle and bustle and dynamicity that many people enjoy. All right, cons. Con number one of living in China in 2021 for expats is that a lot of the institutions and infrastructure are not really designed to accommodate foreigners. This is especially true outside of the, of the major cities. So for example, um, many services require a Chinese ID, which is called a shimp and jump. And an example of this might be uh, getting a bus pass here in Yantai. It's not really, as far as I know, it's not possible to do at all without a Chinese ID. And also museums, right? So I've been to several museums which require an ID to right. even get in. Which right. is ridiculous. They won't accept a passport for an ID. First of all, why do they need an ID at all? But second, they won't accept a non-Chinese ID before. Yeah, but you know, there are some ways to get around this. You uh, become friends with a Chinese local and use your ID. I don't know anything or, about that. <laughs> or you find a, a Chinese girlfriend and use your ID. We should cut that out. Sometimes when a service is available to foreigners, the staff are not necessarily familiar with the procedures for doing it. So an example would be opening a bank account. I think this is probably because just the number of foreigners in China is not that large compared to in other countries. So from what I understand, the percentage of foreign born population in China is something like 0.1%. Compare that to Japan, where it's about 20 times higher, 2%. And in the US, it's something like 15%. Okay, so another thing is that many hotels in China, they just don't accept foreigners. Uh, I think the reason is that foreigners have to be registered at the local police station and many hotels don't have the permit to do so. So to book hotels in China, what I do is I go on Ctrip, which is a big hotel booking site here in China, and I put the accept foreigners filter on. So that filters out the hotels that do accept foreigners and I book those hotels. In addition, I call the hotels beforehand to make sure that I can stay at the hotel because sometimes the, uh, the accept foreigners filter is not, it's not very accurate. And if you don't call, you may find yourself in a situation where you can't stay at that hotel. Yeah, I've talked to some people from Hong Kong who have encountered similar problems here, even though they are technically PRC citizens. Uh, right, so uh, people from Hong Kong, from uh, Macau, from Taiwan, they all encounter the same challenges. Taiwan is not surprising because they're not PRC citizens. Well, that's debatable, Kiko. It's not debatable that they're not PRC citizens. That part is pretty well subtle. All right, guys, so con number two of living in China in 2021 is a widespread surveillance, strict censorship, and lack of privacy. So nowadays in China, cameras, security cameras are everywhere on the streets, in public spaces, and sometimes even outside your apartment door. Also, facial, rec uh, facial recognition uh, is prevalent. So for example, to enter my apartment complex, uh, you have to scan your face. Also, there is strict censorship in China. Uh, what I mean by this is that over 8,000 websites are banned in China. So to access these websites, such as Facebook, YouTube, Google, you have to use a VPN. And uh, sometimes a VPN is very slow, so these sites, uh, they load very slow, and it's very frustrating to use the internet here in China. Yeah, and so this whole COVID pandemic has brought some of this to the fore. So for example, if a locality has someone with a positive test result, then the the, the patient, their name, or at least their surname, and their age, and uh, where they're from, these details will often be published by the local by the local government. Another example, which is not directly related to COVID, is uh, in my place of work, and I think this is common in other places as well, there is a tendency to circulate sort of questionnaires or forms that everyone in the department has to fill out, and it's often in the form of a spreadsheet that's sent via a WeChat group. And everyone's details are 
not kept anonymous. There's no effort to keep anyone anonymous on it. So everyone's name and date of birth and government issued ID and phone number, they're all on these forms. So if someone were motivated to commit identity theft, identity theft they could very easily do that, or so I'm told. Right, so that's how I get a Chinese ID number to buy my anti-bus pass. I don't know anything about that. I don't know anything about that, Tom. <laughs> okay, so con number three of living in China in 2021, uh, for me personally, is that it's very difficult to make local Chinese friends here. And uh, it's very strange because it's very easy for me to make friends in other countries, such as uh, Thailand, South Korea, uh, Taiwan. But here in China, especially in a smaller city like Yantai, it's very difficult for me to make a, a good Chinese friend. I think the reason for that is that the, the, the Chinese people in, in smaller cities, um, they're more I would say they're more close-minded. They're not aware of the outside world. And this is probably partially due to the fact that China seems to be a closed-off society due to the, uh, the great Chinese firewall, the censorship that exists here. Thus, it is very difficult for me to connect on a personal level with local Chinese people, especially in smaller cities like Yantai. And I think this is just due to uh, different mindsets. And uh, as mentioned before, due to the uh, the closed off society of China. Yeah, and while I get along with lots of my coworkers, for example, and uh, certainly many most people here are very friendly, I've noticed the people who might consider to be real friends, most of them have had some pretty significant experience abroad, whether that's working abroad or studying abroad. Right, that's true for me as well. And uh, you know, I find it's much easier to get along with Chinese people who have lived abroad for some time because they absorb a lot of, uh, uh, if they lived out in the West, they absorb a lot of Western values, Western mindset. All right, so con number four of living in China in 2021 is the poor air quality. Although the environment has cleaned up in the past decade or so, the air quality is still not as good as that in the West, okay? We still get a lot of uh, uh, smoggy days here in China and that just really affects your your mood essentially. And of course it harms your health. Yes, I noticed that these pros and cons, there's a bit of a parallel structure to them. So for example, the first pro was convenience. Well, on the flip side of that is the lack of privacy, right? All of the transactions in the mobile lifestyle are traceable, for example. and on the second pro, which was safety, well, part of that is made possible because of the ubiquitous cameras everywhere, which is the surveillance con side, right? And the urban bustling lifestyle, well, it's not for everyone, and it is one contributing factor to the poor air quality. It's true that the food is absolutely delicious here. A few years ago, there were a lot of scandals about food safety and food hygiene, especially in restaurants. That is less of a problem now, but it's still a problem, I would say, wouldn't you? Yeah, I don't know about you, Kiko, but uh, I get diarrhea probably once a month still. Yeah, you don't know about me, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe my stomach is very sensitive, but uh, I, I do get diarrhea frequently here. Yeah, I've heard that from other people as well, unfortunately. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video on the pros and cons of living in China in 2021, please subscribe to my channel and hit that like button. We'll see you guys next time. The pros of living in China is I don't have to worry about losing my face because I lose it all the time. Anything else you want to know about living in China? Living in China, I can go and I can harass anybody I want to harass in a very nice way. But I was told I should, but I do it anyway because I don't really care. You got it? Okay, thank you.